going on guys? I know that a lot of you follow me on Twitter, so you probably already know this news, but I just, I just took my OSCP and I don't think I'm going to clickbait it too much. I failed it. You know, I, I think most people who follow me on Twitter already know that. And you know, if you watch the last vlog, which I'll link here, you know that I was feeling confident, but I wasn't feeling confident enough to count out having to take it a second time. I know so many incredibly talented and incredibly intelligent people who have had to take it two, three, four times. And, you know, I had already kind of counted on probably having to take it one more time. So I'm going to spin this vlog just kind of, this is all stream of consciousness. I don't have any notes, but I just kind of wanted to talk about my experience, what I got wrong mentally and what I got right and how I'm planning on approaching my next attempt. So to start off, I'll kind of talk about my experience with the exam and then I'll go into what I plan on changing, what I plan on doing differently before my next attempt. So the exam was very similar to what I expected. A lot of people had said that the exam machines are very different from the lab machines, and that is 100% true. I, I didn't expect it to be as different because the machines are very, very hardened and much less random than the lab machines. Lab machines kind of felt like they were throwing services on there just to make it vulnerable, which is, I mean, obviously what they had to do. But, you know, there were a couple of machines that seems relatively unrealistic. It's like, why would you have like a web server that's hosting that as well as like, you know, these other weird things. So the exam was much more realistic. I feel like I, I, I think that they did a great job of emulating what I think would be a very realistic network in terms of the services that were running, how the network was laid out. One of the things that I was worried about was I didn't know exactly how many machines were on the exam. There are five machines and I was really hoping that it would be a lower number so you can really focus on all of them. And it, and it was, I think five is a really good number, especially with how the network is laid out, which I'm not going to go into detail about because I know for a fact, but I can't give that information away. It's pretty common knowledge that there is a buffer overflow machine going into it. I was really worried about the buffer overflow machine because I had done a lot of researching. I had watched a lot of videos, Ipsex videos and a couple of others. Live Overflow has done some great videos on buffer overflows. I was really worried about it because I hadn't done any in real life. Like I, ha I hadn't done them in practice. So I was kind of worried about that. So as soon as I found out which buffer overflow machine it was or which machine was the buffer overflow machine, I focused on that first. I'm not going to say that was a bad idea because I still think it's a good idea to focus on what is possibly the hardest box first. I'll kind of explain my, my thought process with that. So I started on that, I found it, and I had a working exploit within the first four hours. What I didn't realize was, was four hours was entirely too long. Um, you should try to get that down to like an hour, hour and a half so that you can focus on the rest of the boxes because they are an absolute beast. So the buffer overflow machine, it was pretty much exactly like the one in the labs. Um, it, you know, it's pretty cut and dry. They give you a vulnerable application and tell you that it's the buffer overflow machine, which I liked. I think if I had spent a ton of time trying to find the buffer overflow machine, it would have been a lot more difficult, but they were straight up just like, this is the one that you need to do the buffer overflow exploit for. So I liked that a lot. I, I think that would have, that, that saved a lot of time, but you know, I developed the exploit and was really psyched when I got it to work. So here are a couple of problems with the way I approached that. One, I took entirely too long. Two, the buffer overflow exploit, I didn't read that you could get it to fail gracefully. So every time you run the buffer overflow, as soon as you close the shell, you basically lose access to it because that crashes the program that's vulnerable. So you pretty much need to break into the box and establish persistence pretty quickly. And you get 24 reverts for the exam, which is nice. You get, you know, basically one per hour, but I spent a couple of reverts on there just because I screwed up creating persistence. And you actually, that machine is one that you actually need to maintain a shell on in order to approach a machine that's on an intranet that you can't reach from outside of the internet. So, Definitely, as soon as you do break the buffer overflow machine, establish persistence. Have a way that you're planning on establishing persistence. So yeah, I, I feel like if I had cut down on my time on that buffer overflow machine, I probably would have passed the exam. Uh, I guess I forgot to mention. So I, I ended up with right at about 50 points on the exam. You need 70 to pass. And I explained to everybody, 
probably not going to fill out the lab report just because I don't want to pass it by five points. And I was really worried that, I, you know, there was actually a mathematical way that I could have gotten to a 65, but not a 70. And I was like, I'm going to be kicking myself if I end up failing by five points. Regardless, I, I you know, ended up with two shells, including the buffer overflow. Well, hey there. I ended up with two shells with the buffer overflow or two root shells with the buffer overflow and a half priv on one of the, like a local privilege account on one of the other machines. So I ended up with three, you know, three shells to be exact. I, I would have come a lot closer if I had focused way more on privilege escalation. So privilege escalation specifically, specifically like Windows privilege escalation was something that I neglected and I wasn't good at in the labs and I didn't bother practicing and that is 100% on me. So if you're one of the people that I've talked to on Twitter who was about to take the exam or start the course, focus a lot on Windows privilege escalation. I just, I, I'm, you know, hating the fact that I, I neglected that because that's actually an incredibly important part of the exam. So going forward, I don't know if I'm going to get a lab extension because of some personal stuff going on. Um, I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of time before I take the exam the second time. I don't know if I'm going to get the lab extension just because I actually got a lot of value out of Ipsex videos and a lot of value out of Hack the Box challenges and things like that. So I really think that instead of doing a lab extension, I'm just going to spend like a couple months probably focusing on Hack the Box challenges. Um, I'm considering starting to put them up on YouTube just because A, I think it would help me because I explain my thought process and B, I've seen how well and how like well received a lot of those videos have been on Ipsex and Live Overflow's channel. And I, I like the educational aspect of it too. So I, I might end up starting to put those on YouTube just as kind of a, a different method for training. They probably will take a while to edit, but we'll see. So I'll probably focus on those for a little while. And once I'm feeling really comfortable with my weaknesses, you know, I, I've got my weaknesses pretty much figured out. You know, I need to polish up my capabilities for buffer overflows and I need to polish up my privilege escalation. And then I need to find some alternative methods for enumeration. So enumeration, like I was talking about in pretty much every other struggle bus video, enumeration is key. And a lot of the boxes that I found, they're just simply in my mind was no way to break into them with the services that I had already enumerated. And I just couldn't find anything else. So, you know, that's something that I think I could do better on. And there was one box that was a Linux box, which is definitely one of my weaknesses. I don't know Linux as well as I think I should. That you end up finding a file that has a lot of incredibly important information in it. And if you know Linux really well, I feel like you'd be able to leverage that information to break the box. I just didn't know it well enough to know like, okay, which, which of these pieces of information is something that I can use to break into this box. That's one of the things that I like about the OSCP is that not only do you have to know how to break systems, but you have to know the underlying services that are on that system. You can't just know how to break things. So that's something that I, I'll definitely be studying up on a lot. I, I, Like I said, I knew going into this that there was a possibility that I would fail my first try. I just wanted to learn as much as possible out of it. And I feel like that I definitely did do that. Even if I failed, I, I feel like I, I definitely did get a lot out of the exam. And going into my second attempt, if I had to take it tomorrow, I think that I would do better. I just think that, you know, I'm going to take a couple of months because of all of the personal stuff that's going on in my life. I'm going to take a couple of months and really study and figure out how to fix my weaknesses before I go, you know, running back into it. So, yeah, I think I'm, I'm just going to focus on hack the box stuff and I'm hoping to use the time in between my attempts to start focusing on a lot more China content because uh, that's what I'm passionate about and there's a lot going on. I'll link to my Hong Kong video here. I'm hoping to make another Hong Kong video because a lot of things have, a lot has gone on over there and that's really got me worried. In short, I'm not that upset about it, honestly. Hey baby, what you doing? I'm not really that upset about it. I'm not gonna beat myself up about it because like I said in the last vlog, I, I, I knew going into it, there was a decent chance that I, I would have to retake it. 
I was a little bit bummed out because I had put so much work into it, but I'm not going to pretend like I didn't see it coming. And, you know, over the next couple of months, I'm going to focus a lot on hack the box stuff and playing with my dogs because they've been extra needy. And, you know, just kind of shoring up my weaknesses, figuring out Windows privilege escalation and Linux, just knowing it better. Thank you guys for the support. Going into it, I, I put up a tweet with um, that in the background. I don't know how many of y'all have noticed the, the background on my computer screens. But I, I put up a, a picture and it just got a ton of support. And I didn't have Twitter open, so I didn't even see it. But a ton of people were tweeting at me and saying, good luck and go drink some water and you're going to do great and all of that. The support for A, my attempt on the OSCP and B, the videos has been awesome. You know, just how many people have watched them and have subscribed because of them. And I really do like the amount of support that I've gotten because of it. And I, I value this as a learning experience, but also as a, as a teaching experience, because I hope that everybody else is getting something out of this as well. So thank you guys for all of the support. Make sure to leave a like and comment on the video. You can you know reach out to me and let me know what I'm doing wrong. And the likes kind of help me out. You know they get my videos you know recommended to other people if I get a bunch of likes. So that kind of helps. And subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff. Like I said, I'm doing China stuff. I'm doing OSCP stuff. Probably going to do hack the box stuff as well. So you guys you know just keep showing up, keep showing support. It's been awesome. Thank you guys.